All right. Um, good morning and welcome back, everyone, to our second lecture. I've um, just um, started the recording, so um, this lecture will also be recorded. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that verse, Zechariah 4.10. Uh, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Yeah, and that's how, you know, it's true. That's how God um, usually works in all of our lives. Um, uh, he, you know, we start small and he sees our faithfulness in small things. And then, you know, um, the law of progression uh, works. God begins to progress things. Right. Let's move into the next chapter now. We're going to talk about the fact that each of us are ministers and ambassadors for Christ. It's along the same uh, line that we uh, just talked about in the earlier chapter, that God has um, gift, grace, and function for each of us. Right? There's gift, grace, and function for each of us. So it's along the same lines. We just developed this a little further. Let me share the PDF. All right. So we are ministers and ambassadors in Christ. All right. So, you know, one of the things we try to emphasize over and over again here at uh, APC is we say every believer is a minister, right? That uh, there is a ministry, there's, an, there's work or, you know, there's service that God has for every believer. And that that's something we need to uh, awaken people to, right? And that's what this chapter does. And it's given to us in Christ. So in Christ, there is a heavenly call on our lives. Could somebody read Philippians 3, 12 to 14, please, for us? Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid, has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you. So that is the Apostle Paul is telling us about his own personal life, his, his own journey. And he says, look, uh, I, I, I'm not already perfect. Now, this is Paul speaking, you know, um, this letter, the letter to the Philippians, was a letter that Paul wrote uh, while he was in prison at Rome. So this is around AD, around AD 66 or maybe 64 to 66, around that time uh, when he was imprisoned in Rome or under house arrest. Um, this is one of the last few letters that he wrote. And around AD 68, he was killed at Rome. So these were letters he was writing they called them the prison epistles uh, he was actually writing from you know where he was uh, under under uh, under house arrest in rome now you can imagine that this is like towards the latter part of his ministry it's not like in the early part of his ministry it was the latter part of his ministry and paul the apostle it was the latter stage of his ministry saying look i am not already perfect Right? That's very interesting. I'm not already perfect, but what am I doing? I'm pressing on. That means I'm pressing forward. I'm, I'm looking ahead. I'm, I'm moving forward so that I can lay hold of the purpose, that for which meaning, the purpose for which Jesus laid a hold of me. So Paul has this deep awareness of God's purpose on his life. You know, There's a that for which that for which Jesus laid a hold of me, you know, and all of us should live like that, with that deep sense of purpose in life, 
that Jesus has touched us for a purpose. Right? And that's what Paul is saying. And then he tells us, he says, you know, uh, I, I don't count myself to have apprehended. That means I don't consider that I have really got a hold of everything that uh, Jesus has for me. You know, so you can imagine by this time, he has already done three missionary journeys. He has already established, you know, uh, churches, so many churches. Uh, people estimate uh, he has traveled to over more than 50 major cities in those times. Uh, and plus, you know, we don't know how many other villages and towns he would have visited along the way. So by this time, he's already done a lot. And still Paul is saying, I don't feel like I've apprehended everything. You know, I don't feel like I've, I've got a hold of everything Jesus has in store for me. So what does he do? He says, one thing I do, I forget the past. Forget those things which are behind. You know, so meaning you can imagine he's saying, I want to forget the past. You know, let go of the fact that I've established, you know, more than 50 churches and, uh, you know, um, trained up so many people by this time. He had, he had trained up uh, many other younger leaders. Uh, by this time, he had written many of his episodes. He's done so much already, but he's saying, I forget all that. And I'm reaching forward for what's up ahead. You know, think about this man. He still feels there's more. God has more for me. You know, and he's sitting in prison right now. He's in Rome. He's under house arrest. Uh, his movement is very limited. And he's saying, hey, I still feel God's got more for me. I don't feel like I've really got a hold of everything. You know? and, and, and this whole thing is, he says, I press toward the goal. That means I press towards the finish line. I mean, I'm running towards the finish line so that I can get the prize and I can get my reward of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Wow, this is a beautiful statement. He says, you know, in Christ, in Christ, there's the upward call of God. There's a heavenly call of God on my life. And this is true not just for Paul, but this is true for all of us. That in Christ, there's the heavenly call. And therefore, you and I can live with such a sense of purpose, like Paul, that Jesus laid a hold of me for a purpose. And no matter how many years I have been in Christ, uh, uh, it's not over yet. Uh, I have, I, you know, we don't, we haven't finished everything he has in store for each of us. But what do we do? We, uh, we forget the things which are behind, let them go. And instead we look forward to what's ahead because there are wonderful things ahead and we must keep pressing towards the finish line to receive the reward he has for us in the call that he has placed on us in Christ. So we can state with absolute confidence for every person who is in Christ, there is a heavenly call, an upward call of God. There's a heavenly call, a call that has come from heaven upon every person. And in that call, there is purpose. Right? God calls us for a purpose or to a purpose. And we must reach ahead for what reach forward to what's ahead and say, Lord, I want to fulfill it. Right? So live with that sense of purpose in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ. And there's a call of God on your life. So in relation to that, a few things. We must live with a sense of wanting to fulfill our ministry. Let's read Colossians chapter 4, verse 17. Somebody could uh, read that, please, for us. Colossians chapter 4 was 17. Colossians chapter 4 was. Okay. Um, whoever first person can continue. Colossians chapter 4 verse 17. And say to 
Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. Mm, thank you. So, Paul is writing to this person, Archippus, and he's saying, I mean, we don't know too much about him. This just name is mentioned. Paul is writing and he's saying, you know, be careful about the ministry which you have received in the Lord. And I've underlined in the Lord. You see, all of us have received a ministry. That means, uh, now the ministry, you know, it sounds like a very technical word. The word ministry simply means to serve. It just means to serve. Okay. So all of us have been called to serve, to do something which has been given to us, you know, which you have received. And it is in the Lord. So in Christ, everybody, each one of us has received a ministry. Now, like we said, you know, uh, the ministries would differ the size of the ministry, the scope of the ministry, the scale of the ministry, the influence and the impact. All of that will be different. That's okay. According to the gift and the grace God's given to us, that's okay. But our responsibility is to make sure we fulfill it. Fulfill it means make sure you complete the work. Whatever he wanted you to do, make sure you finish it. Right? So we must take heed. That means we must be watchful, must be careful. We must be diligent about this. So there's a heavenly call that God has put on each one of us in Christ. And our responsibility is to be watchful, to be diligent, uh, to make sure that we fulfill the ministry which we have received in Christ right so fulfill your ministry and the labor we are doing is in the Lord could somebody read first Corinthians 15 58 please first Corinthians 15 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren. All right. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you. So Paul is reminding us about something. That our labor, that means the work we do, the call we answer, the ministry we do, each of us, our labor is in the Lord. I underline that again. In the Lord. That means it's in Christ. Right? It's, uh, it's not uh, something that is outside of our being in Christ. So this whole study is about being in the Lord, being in Christ. So in Christ, while we have all these blessings and all these wonderful things we've talked about, we're also called to labor. We're called to answer. Uh, we, we are, you know, we are invited to answer this heavenly call. We have this ministry given to us in the Lord. And Paul is telling us that work that we do, it's in the Lord. It's coming out of our life in Him. It's coming out of this place that we have in Him. Uh, the work we do, it's, it's coming out of that place of, uh, out of our inheritance and identity in Christ. So it's not something separate. You are in Him. You are a new creation in Him. You have a wonderful identity, your wonderful inheritance. And out of that place, you're also serving. You're laboring. You're answering a call you're fulfilling your ministry out of being in christ so it's your labor in the lord it's your work in the lord and when you and i are operating are doing our work from that place in the lord the work we do is never in vain it's not in vain it's not a wasted life right so when we whatever we do it's not a wasted life. So we can be steadfast. We can be immovable. We can be abounding. Steadfast is to be steady, 
consistent, immovable, that's unshakable, and always abounding, always increasing. So because the work you're doing is coming out of your place in Christ, it's not wasted. And it is something you can, you and I can be consistent. We can be unshakable and always increasing because this is the work coming from in the Lord, a place in the Lord, right? So that's the uh, key point I want us to understand. So that leads us into this next truth that the works that we do, that is the ministry, whatever you know, God's called us to do, it actually flows out of our life in Him, out of our life in Him. Right? And um, I would like us to read Romans 15, 17 to 19 from the Passion Translation. I, I've put the one from the King James, New King James up above, but let's just read it from the Passion Translation. It just brings it out a little clearer for us. Could somebody read that, please? Romans 15, 17 through 19. Romans 15, 17 to 19. Now then, it is through my union with Jesus Christ that I enjoy an enthusiasm and confidence in ministry for God. And I will not be free. Thank you, Pastor. To speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. For many non-Jewish people are coming into faith, obedience by through power of Spirit of God, which is displayed through mighty signs and amazing wonders, both in the word and deed. Starting from Jerusalem, I went from place to place as far as distant Roman province of Illyricum, Illyricum, fully preaching the wonderful message of Christ. Okay. okay. So this uh, place, Illyricum, is part of Albania today. today. Uh, the country of Albania or Northern Albania. And so Paul basically says he went as far as Lyricum preaching. But uh, I want us to understand something here, what Paul is saying. He's saying, it is through my union with Jesus Christ, through my union with Jesus Christ, or through my life in Christ, that I... I'm so enthusiastic and confident in my ministry for God. Isn't that you know, a beautiful statement? It's because I am in Christ. I am so zealous. I'm so enthusiastic. And I'm so confident of the work I'm doing. So that's something you and I must learn and must live that because we are in union with Christ, because we are in Jesus, you know, we enjoy the zeal, or we are able to have the zeal and this confidence in ministry to God. On you know, this past Sunday, it was a little funny. Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, we, nowadays, we've opened up our services and all our locations. So usually Sunday, you know, I preach two services. I do the eight o'clock service and then the ten thirty service. So this Sunday, we did the eight o'clock service to the ten thirty service, and then we had lunch, and then we had to go visit somebody who is uh, recovering from cancer. So we went to visit her uh, at her home, and uh, uh, and to pray with her, and. Uh, and by the time I got there, so we were already very so tired. And then, then you know, like it is typical in Indian homes, if you visit, they will feed you a lot of food. <laughs> and we told them, you know, we already had lunch and everything. We don't, we can't eat anything more. That no, you know, they had to put food out and put things out, and you had to eat. So. Uh, my wife and I, we, we had to eat some things that they put before us. Uh, and it, was, it was so difficult because, you know, uh, but we actually went to uh, uh, pray. 
and then you know of course uh, this was an elderly person so she wanted to talk and she was you know talking and we were just you know just just being there to be there for her and you know by the time i think it was like 4:30 or something i was really tired really tired you know but then uh the time came when okay uh, all those you know those initial pleasantries were over and now we were going to do the communion you know now I, I, honestly while all this was happening i was feeling so tired you know i was really tired but then when time came okay now we're going to do the communion we you know in her house with her and then pray for her and pray for her healing and you know it was like suddenly there was this enthusiasm that came and even i was surprised because physically by that time it was 4:30 we left home like early in the morning around 7ish we leave now this was 4:30 in the afternoon i was really tired already but the time came okay we're going to partake of the communion we had kept the communion things out there and a few of us were there you know suddenly i just felt so refreshed then as we started just reading the scriptures uh, we sang a few songs uh and then we read the scriptures about the communion it was just so wonderful the presence of god just came just filled and i could just feel the presence of god just coming on us and it is almost like i was outside of myself because i know my body was so tired uh i was very tired but that moment uh i was able to minister out of my spirit Uh, and then you know bishop to minister he minister the communion and prayed for her minister to her and so on so i'm just sharing that simple simple thing it's just you know it's part of life in the sense that look we will feel tired and all of that but then this is where it comes from through our union with christ because we are in christ we have that that enthusiasm even though physically we are tired but when it comes to serving god and serving people there's that freshness there's that enthusiasm there's that zeal that infuses uh, our, our our lives and then of course it gives us confidence in ministering to god a ministering for god to people right so all of ministry we must understand comes out of that place we have in Christ right and therefore we can speak of those things which Christ accomplished through us right so when we are ministering out of that place in Christ we have the enthusiasm the zeal the passion we need we have the confidence we need in the ministry we do and we realize it is what christ does through us right it's what christ does through us so all of ministry flows out of our union with jesus christ and keep that in mind you know when you go out to minister uh you know do whatever god has called you to do remember it's it's flowing out of your life in him you are spiritually one with him and his life is flowing through you it's as as uh, it's really his work coming through you now we just have to make ourselves available we have to be there and then he ministers through us and because of that we can minister boldly in the lord we minister boldly in him right so uh let's read these uh, verses here in acts 14 somebody could read acts 14 3 and also second corinthians 3 5 6 and verse 12 please for us there acts go ahead 14 3 therefore they stayed there a long time speaking boldly in the lord who has who was bearing witness to the word of his grace granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands yep second corinthians 3 
Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Mm. Now, notice in both these passages, you see the word boldness or uh, speaking boldly, right? So what is uh, in Acts 14? This was Paul and Barnabas. They're on their first missionary journey. It says they spoke boldly in the Lord. So what was the source of boldness? It was being in the Lord, right? And so you and I, when we minister, we can minister boldly in the Lord. So when you minister and you understand that ministry is really coming out of your union with Christ, and because you're in him, he is working through you, then you can minister with boldness. You minister boldly in the Lord. And Paul writes about that in 2 Corinthians 3. He says, look, we are not sufficient of ourselves. Uh, you know, to think anything as being from ourselves, you know, so what's happening here is not from us, but our sufficiency is from God. God is the one who makes us sufficient or, you know, fully uh, uh, fit for that situation. It's God who makes us able to handle the situation. Our sufficiency is from God and he has made us sufficient as ministers. I mean, he's made us well able, fully equipped as ministers of the new covenant, right? And because our sufficiency is from God, because he has made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, uh, and because it's the work of the spirit, what, what do we do? He says, we use great boldness of speech. In other words, we speak boldly. We minister boldly, right? So when we recognize that it's God working in us and through us by his spirit, as we minister, we can minister with great boldness of speech, right? Let's keep that in mind. And uh, all of this is in relation to us being in him as ministers to do the ministry. Uh, Jesus taught us, you know, when we are in him, he wants us to bear much fruit. And we are familiar with these verses in John 15, verse 5 and 8. Jesus said, you know, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you are in me and I am in you, you will bear much fruit. Right? So notice he says much fruit. Much fruit means there's, there's an ever-increasing measure of fruit. It's increasing. So our bearing much fruit comes out of us abiding in him. And he in us, from this place of our life in him, much fruit comes. And the Father is glorified when we bear much fruit. We are fruitful in the call of God in, in, in the, the life we live and also in the work we do. Right? So that's much fruit. But how does much fruit come? He says, it's the life that we have in him. Right? So... This whole understanding of our life in him, of our identity, our inheritance, of our life in him, is the basis for us being very fruitful in life and ministry. It's when we understand how to you know, abide in him and he in us, that, that life that we have in him, and living out of that life, then we will bear much fruit. So fruitfulness comes from our life in him, from our abiding, remaining, continuing, and operating out of that life. So next week, we will talk about how to do that. But as we abide, remain, and live out of that life in him, that's the secret to bearing much fruit, being very fruitful in life and ministry. Now, what do we do in ministry? And just... just touching on a few things here before we finish this chapter. One of the things I want to encourage us to do in ministry is to nurture other people in Christ. Right? So uh, Paul tells us, you know, for instance, in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, and 17, 
he talks about having in Christ Jesus giving birth to people through the gospel. He says, you know, you may have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers, for in Christ I have begotten you through the gospel. So notice how he's talking about being in Christ, but then he's talking about birthing people into the kingdom of God. And um, later on in that same passage, he refers to Timothy as his son in the Lord. You know, somebody whom he he's, uh, uh, you know, not only birthed, but nurtured in the Lord. And therefore he says, you know, Timothy will teach you of my ways in Christ. So nurture other people in Christ Jesus. So that's one part of our ministry is to help other people grow up in Christ, become strong in Christ, become equipped in Christ, uh, you know, be um, be perfected in Christ. So Paul writes this here in Colossians one twenty eight. He says, "We preach, we preach Jesus. We warn every man. We teach every man that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus." So what are we doing? We are helping perfect people in Christ. We're helping nurture them. The word perfect means to bring them to a place of completion or maturity. So we are helping bring people to that place in Christ Jesus. So one aspect of our ministry, that is the ministry God has given to all of us, is to help birth people and to help nurture people in Christ Jesus. So in Christ, there's a heavenly call on your life. There's a ministry you need to fulfill. There's work that you do in the Lord that you shouldn't give up on. And that work is something that you do out of your life in Him. And out of when you work out of Him, you'll be very fruitful. And part of that work is to nurture other people in Christ Jesus. Another aspect of that work is to represent Christ as his ambassador. Right? So let's read this passage here in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. Uh, you can start reading and I'll just scroll it up when you come to verse 20. Could somebody read that for us? Second Corinthians chapter 15, verses 17 to 20. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who are reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Okay. Thank you. Seth. So notice in verse 17, he says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. So this is our foundation text for this whole study. Being in Christ, be a new creation. All things have gone, all things have become new. And all things are from God right now. And he's reconciled us to himself through Jesus. So it's wonderful. God's done this work for us. But he didn't stop there. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So we are in Christ. We are new creation. Everything is from God. We are reconciled to God. All of that's wonderful. But along with that comes the ministry of of reconciliation. That was God saying, look, I've done all this for you. I made you made you a brand new person. I've, uh, I've uh, you know, everything has changed about you because everything is in your life now comes from me. And I brought you back to myself, but I'm also giving you a ministry of reconciliation. And what is that ministry of reconciliation? It is that through us, God wants to reconcile the world to himself. That means he wants to reach the rest of the world. He wants to reconcile the world 
every other person, every person in the world. He wants to see them brought back to him. And so, in view of that, we people who are in Christ, we are now ambassadors for Christ. So that's a very important message. To be in Christ makes us ambassadors for Christ. Now, this word ambassador is a very interesting word because when Paul was writing this, he chose a very particular Greek word. He chose a word that was normally used about generals in the Roman army or for governors, you know. So these were high ranking officials, you know, general, a general in the army or a governor of the Roman army. Paul picked that word and he said, look, we are that for Christ. And so in English, in modern English, we think about an ambassador, we think about uh, a diplomat, you know, we think about somebody who's representing a, a country in a different country. And Paul is saying, that's who we are. We are these high ranking diplomats for Jesus. We are representing Jesus in this world for one reason, we want to see the world reconciled back to him. So to be in Christ makes you and me ambassadors for Christ. Diplomats, people who represent Jesus in this world so that people could be reconciled back to him. So we need to do everything we can you know, to see more and more people reconciled back to God, brought back to him. And remember that as ambassadors, you have the full backing of the country you represent. And that's true, even in the earthly realm, an ambassador, he's full, fully backed up by his country. He may be sent as an ambassador, he or she may be sent as an ambassador to a different country, and they go there, but they're fully backed up by the country. If they need any help, there are countries behind them to assist them. And this is the truth about you and me as ambassadors for Christ. Christ is fully behind us as we go out to represent him in this world. And uh, so we must represent Christ faithfully. You know, when we preach his word, uh, we don't peddle the word of God. That means we don't, you know, um, uh, we don't contaminate the word. We don't uh, mix it in. We don't adulterate the word to mix it in with things. That's what the word peddle means, to mix it in with things so that, you know, makes it nice for people. No, you give the pure word. The unadulterated word we speak in Christ and we speak before God in Christ. So we are we represent Christ and his word faithfully. And if we suffer for him, our sufferings are in Christ. So even when people mock us, laugh at us, uh, do all kinds of things against us because we are ambassadors, it's in Christ. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's an honor to be able to suffer uh, in his name. The last point I want to bring out here in this chapter is that we, because we are all in the Lord, because we are all, all each one of us have a heavenly call, are answering a heavenly call, doing a ministry given to us in the Lord, each one of us. You know, we may be from different parts of the world. We may be from different backgrounds. Uh, we may have different, you know, positions in life. We may, whatever, there's so many things that could be different. Yet, we are all co-workers in Jesus. And this passage here in Romans 16, uh, we won't read it, but what I want to point out is Paul mentions the names of so many different men and women. And what is so un un notable is, he calls them his co-workers or his fellow workers. And he says they are in Jesus, in Christ. You see how many times he says 
you know, he uses that phrase, those phrases, in the Lord, in Christ, or in Christ Jesus, in the Lord, in Christ. That means he's saying, you know, they are my co-workers in the Lord. They are as much in the Lord as I am. And whatever work they are doing, they are also doing it in the Lord. We are fellow workers. You know, and for some, he refers to as fellow prisoners. That means they were also imprisoned, <laughs> imprisoned with him. You know, uh, they suffered with him together. And so I really want us to keep that in our hearts and minds that when we see other people serving the Lord, we honor them. We see them as competitors, not as people that we have to outdo, but as co-workers, fellow workers, fellow prisoners. We are, we are in the Lord. We're all doing our, our work as God has assigned for us. And we're doing it in Christ. We're doing it in the Lord, each one of us. And so we're not competing. We're not fighting. We are fellow workers or co-workers in the Lord. And, and you find this in Paul's writings in many places, you know, where he refers to different people. Tychicus in the Lord and Epaphroditus in the Lord. And, you know, he urges us to, uh, you know, recognize those who are other people are in the Lord and honor them. So what did we learn in this um, section as ministers and ambassadors? Each one of us, let me quickly review before we close. Each one of us have a heavenly call in Christ. And therefore we need to live with that deep sense of purpose like the Apostle Paul did. And we need to fulfill our ministry, make sure we finish the work, live to finish that work. And know that, you know, when we labor, it's a labor in the Lord. It's not just our own efforts, but it's coming out of him. And so we can be, you know, steadfast in our work. And um, um, it is through our union that we receive enthusiasm and confidence. And it is Christ working through us all of these wonderful things, the signs, the wonders, the miracles. And so we can minister boldly in the Lord because it's the Lord working through you. You know, whatever God, whatever opportunity comes your way, take it up and minister boldly, knowing that you're ministering out of your place in Christ. And as you minister out of your place in Christ, that's the secret to bearing much fruit. Right? To, if you try to do it on our own, he says, it'll amount to nothing. It's nothing. But we do it, when we do it out of our life in Christ, it's going to be very fruitful. That's the secret. And we must nurture other people in Christ, and we are, an, we are ambassadors for Christ to the world. We are representing Christ to the world. And lastly, we are co-workers with others who are also in the Lord, serving the Lord. Okay, so with this, I will pause here. Let's see if there are any questions, anything that people want to ask. Uh, any questions, anything that you want to discuss here on what we spoke about today uh, before we close? Any questions? Elisha, Paul, Enoch, any questions? Okay. All right. Okay, I was going to close. Okay, do we have a question? Go ahead, please. Yes, yes, Master. Thank you. Um, this about uh, what we read in Philippines. Chapter three. Uh, how can we ensure that uh, we are not mm -hmm. uh, pursuing something that? Christ has not laid hold of us. We are, um, you know, chasing after something else. Mm. Uh, so, uh, mm. Mm. Yeah. 
and just yeah. want to... I think so first so first you know uh, all of us uh, you know, it begins with a simple commitment saying Lord uh, I know you've called me with a heavenly calling for a purpose and I want to live for that purpose right and Lord show me what is that purpose show me what you want me to do right and this is uh, I would say it's a lifelong prayer you know like even today even now that's my constant prayer Lord show me what you want me to do right so it's not like um, uh, you know we, we would ever stop praying that so Lord show me what you want me to do because I want to live for that purpose that you have for me I want to live for you know, what you have called me to live for, right? So we, we constantly pray. And then what we do is our responsibility is to discern the will of God step by step. Means every step of the way, uh, I need to say, this is what God wants me to do. And we begin to walk in step and in time with him. God gives us a sense of direction he gives us saying okay this is what i'm taking you this is what i want to do with you um this is you know like the big picture for your life but then we have to journey with him step by step and uh, uh, then of course there are practical ways by which we can receive god's guidance uh, you know in each step of the way so um uh, that's where you know uh, I, I, I thank you you're learning on, on receiving God's guidance, um, you know, how he leads us in different ways, by his spirit, by his word, uh, by the inner witness, uh, by many other ways that, that God leads us. So we, you know, we learn to be open uh, to God's guidance. And our goal is follow his leading, avoid distractions, you know, avoid things that could distract us from what he's called us to do. Sometimes even good things can become a distraction. You know, we need to stay focused on what God wants us to do. And then uh, uh, we need to discern. You know, there may be three good things. All three things are good for you. But what, which one of the three does God want? So that has to be aligned to the purpose of God for your life. So we receive God's guidance step by step we journey. You know? Thanks. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's uh close in prayer. Uh next week uh we're going to get into the last section, which is how do we live out of that life in Christ? You know, so we know what is our identity, we know what is our inheritance. But then practically, what are the things we do to live from that? And because only when we live from that, we can bear much fruit. We will get into that next week. Could somebody please uh, lead, in, lead us in prayer and dismiss us? Um, Rosalind, you want to pray? Okay, yeah, we'll, go ahead. Yes, Master, I want to pray. Go ahead. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Wonderful Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful session, for this powerful session that we had. Thank you for speaking to us, Lord, as the members of your body, Lord Jesus. May we function supernaturally by your grace that you have given us, O oh God, and bring glory to your name, thereby, Daddy, fulfilling the upward call that we have received in you. Mm may we press on towards our goal father lord thank you jesus for getting those things that are behind us mm -hmm. looking at you lord jesus the author and the finisher of our faith mm -hmm. lord i thank you and i bless you i praise your name lord i also thank you for our dear pastor and ask you lord to anoint him and use him mightily for your glory mm -hmm. father god every word that has been shared that has been sown in our hearts lord may we reap May we bring hundredfold fruits, Lord God, for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, God bless you. I'll see you on Friday. 
and uh, have a good uh, enjoy the week god bless see you again soon bye thank you sir thank you avdesh thank, thank you, you thank you each one thank you